Hi strangers, it's Mandy from Lady and Pups. Uh, I'm going to, to be demonstrating a recipe today that's in the making for a while. If you follow my Instagram, you know that um, a couple of weeks ago I was asking you guys um, what is your definition of the perfect flour tortilla and I think that most people agree it's something um, stretchy. Um, with a good elastic elasticity to it and um, translucent and chewy okay not not like bagel chewy but like a soft chewiness instead of doughiness and um, after like you know a couple of weeks of testing and then research I've kind of arrived at the conclusion that there's this place in Mexico called Sorona and then they're kind of famed for their version of flour tortilla which is the super large sheet that is really super thin, like paper thin, see-through thin, and then it's stretchy, translucent, and chewy at the same time. It's perfect for burrito or tacos. And so today I'm going to show you um, how I achieve that by using a, I think it's an ingenious technique in how to get, you know, getting that super thin, like see-through um, tortilla without, you know, any special skills really. Let's start by talking about the typical flour tortilla recipes that is very common on the internet, which is basically um, they would tell you to put flour and um, warm water and then lard or butter or you know other types of flavorful fat knead it all together into a dough. But I'm going to change that sequence a little bit because there are things that aid gluten formation. And there are things that kind of stunt gluten formation in the dough. So salt strengthens gluten formations and protein strengthens gluten formations. But fat and sugar, it makes the dough harder to form gluten. So instead of adding the fat directly in the beginning of the dough, I'm going to actually knead the dough to a significant degree that it has enough gluten formations before I add the fat. So in this bowl, I have a bread flour, which is has a protein percentage of around 12 to 14%. You don't want anything lower than that. Most recipe will ask you to use all-purpose flour. I would actually say um, bread flour simply just yields a, a chewier, a better result with a much better elasticity. And you cannot use room temperature water. You have to use water that is around 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I have this water just right out of the microwave. I always still put a thermometer in it just to make sure that it has the right temperature. 65 degrees, yep, that's correct. And then I need, I'm going to pour 180 grams of water in this. Do it slowly so you don't go overboard. 180 grams, okay? Now, if you're wondering why can I just use room temperature water, why hot water? Hot water dough is quite typical um, when you want to produce a dough that is soft and chewy at the same time. I'm going to mix this just until it comes together. Once the dough has come came together relatively into a cohesive mass, turn the speed to medium. And because this is a small amount of small amount of dough okay so it's going to sometimes the hook has difficulty grabbing onto it so sometimes you need to stop the machine a, a little bit just to help help it out just to help it like stay on the hook so I'm going to knead this on medium speed for about 10 minutes until the dough is super smooth and it has a really good elasticity to it okay so it's been about 10 on uh, 12 minutes and you can see that the dough is now, it's a, it's a tacky dough. When you tap on it, it's going to feel moist. But when the machine is run, running, it should pull away cleanly from the sides and the bottom of the bowl, okay? But when the machine stops, it should like kind of sticks to the bowl on the bottom like this. So fat, fat, fat. Um, well, I, I typically use lard and most tortilla recipes usually calls for lard. Um, but today I have I have goose fat, so that's what I'm using. You can use butter um, or any other types of flavorful fat, um, beef fat, chicken fat, 
whatever you have on hand, that'll be fine too. So I'm going to add two tablespoons inside, okay? And that that is actually less fat than what um, most flour tortilla recipes would call for. And But that is because I'm going to, because I don't want the dough to, to have too high of a fat content that it loses that chewy and stretchiness. But I do want the flavor. So later on the fat, I'm going to show you that the later fat is going to be, um, the, the additional fat is going to be added back into the, um, the tortilla in a different way, okay, when we shape the dough. So two tablespoons. So once the fat is added, you're going to start on low and it's going to look all like greasy and stuff. I mean, if you, if your fat came um, directly from the fridge and it's solid, it wouldn't have this issue. But because my kitchen is really warm and the fat has melted a little bit, but um, it's okay. It's just going to just keep beating it until it's completely incorporated. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. And you can see that all the fat has been basically beat into the dough. And you're looking about the same looking for the same consistency here, which is when the machine is running, the dough should be able to pull away from the sides and the bottom of the bowl. But when the machine stops, it's going to stick back on. So right after um, the dough is kneaded, um, what I like to do is I like to divide them first. So you can make this dough um, the day ahead of time. Keep it in the bowl, cover with plastic wrap, keep it in the fridge. Um, but today we're going to go right ahead, okay? So I'm, what I'm going to do right now, this is right after the dough is kneaded without any resting, okay? So I'm going to divide this into eight equal portions. So now remember, um, these numbers are based on making a 13 inches tortilla which is very big okay 13 inches which is about 33 cm so if you don't have a skillet that big and you're using say you have you only have 12 inches or 10 inches then that number is going to change so if you have a 12 inches skillet um you're going to do divide it into 10 portions if you have a 10 inches skillet you're going to divide it into 12. it has to be even numbers okay now i'm going to explain why it has to be even numbers so right now i'm going to do eight Try to um, try to make like you know all the portions as even as possible. So what I like to do is I just like to weigh each dough in my hand, and if I feel like one is heavier than the other, I just like you know try to balance that a little bit, and then I'm going to shape shape each of them into a tight ball. I do this by cupping my you know, cupping the dough with my the palm of my hand, and I use the friction that because this is a tacky dough, so I use the friction against the table to kind of um, bring it into like a like a tight smooth ball. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it right here in chronological order that they are handled. So the, this is the first one. I'm gonna put it here, and then the second one, third you know, in chronological orders. This allows um, each dough to have equal amount of time to rest in between handling. With plastic wrap and let them rest for one hour at least. I mean, if your kitchen is like super warm, which mine is right now and I'm sweating like a pig, you can do away with maybe 45 minutes and if you if you make the dough um the day before and then you're taking it out of the fridge and you're doing this um then you only need to let them rest for like 30 minutes before you before you move on okay now what i have here is the rest of um the two tablespoons of fat that i i left in the pot and i've added um two uh tables i mean two teaspoons of flour in this and I'm going to whisk until it's even and then I'm gonna kind of lightly brown the flour uh, over low heat so essentially I'm making a roux and the reason why I'm doing this is because this fat is later on going to be used to um, you know to for this like you know this ingenious technique that I'm showing you guys and it's gonna be used to separate um, two tortillas and um, the flour 
um, instead of just using oil, the flour kind of gives it that extra layer of protection so that these two tortillas don't stick together. And I'll show you later, okay? Okay, so dough, the doughs are rested, and so what I'm going to do now is basically I'm going to show you um, a way of rolling out the dough that it's going to allow you to get super, super thin tortillas that you normally could not get, okay? So again, these are in chronological order, right? One, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, okay? So I'm going to go back to starting with one and two. So you're going to need two dough balls. Um, have your a little bit of flour. Only dust these um, as needed if, when they stick. And I'm going to roll one out to about, about six inch in diameter. Okay? Doesn't have to be too precise. So there. I have one. Okay? And then I'm going to roll the other one out to the same size. And this is why you have to, when you divide, when you do your math and divide your doughs into, the, the big dough into small equal portions, you have to do it in even numbers because they are going to be rolled out in pair. Okay. So about the same size, right? And then you're going to take that roux, essentially, right? And you're going to brush one disc generously with this um, roux mixture. All the way to the edges, leave no margins. Okay, all the way to the edges, okay? like this, and then you're going to put the other one on top. You can like kind of like pull the edges so that it kind of, you know, it matches the shape and, and the size. And then that's set number one. And then we're going to move on to the next two dough balls and then, you know, repeat the same thing. And then eventually we're going to have four sets or four stacks of these uh, tortillas. And again, Put, arrange these in chronological order, so this is number one, and I'm going to repeat with the rest. So now I have all four sets, right, rolled out. So why the hell am I doing it this way? So if you have ever watched any demo videos about, um, any chefs making super paper thin um, pastries or doughs, um, typically what they do is they, they spin it and they use gravity and physics to kind of stretch out the dough into this like paper thinness. I tried to do that before, I just I don't have that skill and I really don't think that is necessary for a home cook to master that skill. But if you want to roll this down um, to that degree of thinness, that dough is easily going to tear and it's not going to be easy. So. By stacking two tortillas together and then roll it out as thinly as you humanly can, instead of, instead of one tortilla that is you know, rolled out as thinly as you can, you are actually rolling out two tortillas at the same time, okay, as thinly as you can. And when this tortilla cooks, the oil is going to separate these two tortillas, it's going to puff up. And then when you peel them away from each other, you're actually getting two tortillas that are only half the thickness. Does that make any sense? Let me show you, okay? So how you roll this dough out is just like how you roll out any dough, okay? The only difference is that I would, you know, flip this back and forth as I roll it out instead of, you know, rolling out all exclusively on one side just to make sure that um, these two, two tortillas are being rolled out evenly in thickness and also this prevents sticking as well because you're like basically um, releasing it from the counter over and over again. So what I do is I usually place my rolling pin in the center of the dough and 
and I try to like roll it out into all different directions. And if it sticks, I just like if it's sticking, I just flip it, right? And then I keep doing what I'm doing until I can see the texture of my countertop through the dough. So that's how thin I want this to be. Again, only dust with flowers when needed. And you don't, you don't want to use too much flour, but you also don't want this to stick. Because when it sticks, it's going to create folds. Okay, I'm going to go even further than this. Again, like I said, don't worry about, you know, that you're going to press the two tortillas together. You won't. They're not, they won't stick together. They will separate when you cook it. So just focus on rolling it out as thinly as you possibly can, okay? So, this is like a super thin dough, and this is like already as thin as I can possibly go, but instead of one tortilla, this is actually two tortillas. And when, because of the, the oil that we use, when it cooks and puffs up, it's going to separate really easily, and what you get um, is actually two tortillas that is only half the thickness of this. Does that make any sense? The pan has to be, the skillet has to be hot enough that when you apply a little bit of this roux on top, it's going to smoke up like this. And then you simply lay your tortillas on top. And you can see that I'm rolling it out even bigger than the size of my skillet, and that's fine. And then you know, you're going to like dust just a little bit of oil on this side too. Just a little bit, okay? Not too much. And then it has to take, you know, the pan has to be hot enough that it only takes a few seconds for the first side to brown, okay? Because this is so thin, you don't want a lukewarm skillet that's going to dry out the tortilla. You want this to cook in seconds, okay? And you can see that it's already puffing up. And that's a super good sign because you know that these two tortillas are separating. See, just a few seconds like this, okay? And then you transfer that onto a platter. Let it lay flat on the platter on top of each other. And you cover with a, with a towel. And you just repeat, okay? Until you're done with all four sets. Okay, so I'm going to show you, it's been, cool, been cooling down, it's cool enough to handle. I'm going to show you how easy the tortilla separates, okay? So here, I can see like, you know, these two tortillas, that's where they, the layers meet. And then it's going to separate super easily, okay? And just look at how thin and translucent, it's almost like a fabric. And this is the kind of thinness that you can't normally get without doing it this way. Now you may be thinking, but by doing it this way, I don't get char on one side of the tortilla. Please, please do not toast the other side of the tortilla back on the skillet because this tortilla is so thin and I feel like I've eaten it just as is and it's perfectly chewy, soft, you know, sublime. But if you toast the other side on the skillet too, you're going to dry out the tortilla so much that it's just going to be like paper, okay? What I do is I use a blowtorch, okay? And this is actually two birds in one stone because number one, it, it adds chard and it's not the kind of chard that you could ever get from toasting on a skillet. It's actually kind of like a charcoal. It's like almost as if the tortilla was toasted over charcoal. So you get even more flavor by using a blowtorch. Number two, it also warms up the tortilla perfectly. So if you are, you know, making these ahead of a time, I would say cover it with a damp towel, not a dry towel, but a damp towel. And when you're ready to serve, just torch sides until it's lightly 
blistered. All you want is a little tiny blackened blisters on the tortilla. Let's see. You see how translucent it is? It's just so amazing. It's like a piece of fabric. And how like elastic this tortilla is. It's almost like a plastic band, okay? And just by feeling this tortilla, you know that it has amazing texture. Mm. That chewiness is, is the key. If you like doughy tortillas or even leaven tortilla, which to me is like a thin pita, you're not gonna like this. But if you like chewy, super thin, delicate, fabric-like tortillas, this recipe, you just can't beat this recipe. And for me, the definition of like a perfect tortilla, it has to be good enough to be eaten on its own. I almost don't have to wrap this in anything because like the flavor of the fat that you're using as you chew, it just comes out more and more and more. And this is why it's such so important to use a flavorful fat, right? Like lard, butter, goose fat, chicken fat. Don't use vegetable oil, you're gonna get flavorless tortilla. And it's just such a gentle chewiness. It's not the kind of chewiness that's gonna make your jaw sore or anything like that. It makes this tortilla completely unique from all the um, recipes on the internet that, that I've tried because all of them would suggest that you knead the fat into the dough right in the beginning and that's going to give you a doughy tortilla instead of a chewy tortilla because the dough and right from the get-go contains so much fat that it couldn't form enough gluten. Listen, get a blowtorch because those are these, these little black dots, it gives so much flavor to the tortilla. It's almost as if like somebody is toasting it right next to you on charcoal. These tortillas are super big and they're tailored to um, making burritos, but you can totally um, make them small and then use them for like hand-sized tacos. If I'm making it this big, I would probably use like a three layers of it. And that's gonna give you not just the chewy texture, but also the separation of layers. It just adds another texture to the whole taco game. So I hope you like this and I, I'm really, I really love this recipe. I hope you like it and that's it. See you next time.